Tomorrow's our one year wedding anniversary. Yay, congratulations. He made it a year, the poor daffy bastard. Because, yeah, I remember y'all went off to Hawaii and you didn't tell none of us and nobody got invited. You didn't want us there because you're not our friends and you're bad people. <laughs> We told everybody. We just didn't invite anybody. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We didn't even invite my damn family. My sister kept angling, and I'm like, you're not coming. I want you to go to Hawaii. She's like, you know, the Disney Ohana Resort is beautiful. I'm like, no. I want to go I go snorkel and and throw somebody into a volcano. I want to go to Hawaii. We did not do either of those things. No. Well, then, well you missed your chance there, Tara. Come on. <laughs> We, we toured a bunch of the lost filming locations. We got to go back and do the other half of the tour because we only did the south side of the island lost locations. Now we got to do the north side of the island lost locations. How can you go to an island with volcanoes and not throw someone in? That's that's like, that's what else are you going to do with a volcano? I'm not a murderer. But it's a volcano. It's sort of, you know, I mean, what else are they for? Come on, really. I, I could find someone to throw in. No. There you go. Dan's helping. Dan, he's helping. It's good. Please don't there's, encourage. There, please. There's definitely, definitely some. Please don't encourage his already homicidal tendencies. <laughs> Orange is not a good color on him. <laughs> and he's really the primary breadwinner around here. Actually, we kind of don't want to send Dan to jail because he would probably start a tribe in there. <laughs> that too. And then I'd have to like. Get a job. <laughs> you have to smuggle shit in. That would suck. Well, you with know, a... I just get to hang out with cats, like, professionally. Well... I got a sweet deal here going. Don't fuck it up for me. With all the shitty things going on out in the world, we do have some actual funny and not... There are some stories this week that are not awful, and yet they're still fucking hilarious. Which I wow. think I think we kind of it's need. It's been a while since we had one of those. Yeah. Yes, it has, and I think we we sort. This is one of those weeks we sorely need. I mean, yeah, we still have fucking idiots this week. Uh, I that's not going to stop. But we have some just general guy things that make you happy that think they exist. Things that make you go hmm. No, just things that, that those weird confluences that happen in the world that just you're like, yeah, I'm glad that happened. I'm glad that, th that the stars aligned to make that weird shit become a reality. Where's my intro? There. Let's put this on. Then. There we go. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit bring it back here for the segment we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you and this this first one um I'll, I'll put this out there to the people in the chat and people who are watching this later on youtube um if you're from toronto and you ask just say the words toronto's mascot everyone out there in the toronto areas went oh don't just a don't. giant drop of maple syrup? No. Because <laughs> Toronto has a little bit of a problem with raccoons. Oh. <laughs> Toronto, oh. Toronto has a massive raccoon infestation. And this week, a bank in Toronto had to close because a bunch of raccoons... They went into business. Raccoons. Look at your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're convinced their daddy was a raccoon because our cats are little trash pandas. Yeah, you you can't eat Hershey's Kisses or anything in this house without a cat. Because Dottie's up in your face like, give me that wrapper. <laughs> give me that wrapper. I need it. And the latest and battle... kind of the faces they make, too. Yeah. In the latest battle... Like <laughs> In the latest battle of Toronto's perpetual raccoon war, a family of masked bandits has shut down a midtown Toronto bank, annexing its ceiling as part of their territory. The raccoons broke into the ceiling at the RBC branch at St. Clair and Oakwood Avenues, 
Uh, on August 23rd, bank spokesman Mark Hamill. Wow, really? That sounds made up. Someone named their kid Mark. Someone's last name was Hamill. Either that's made up, or that dude's life is fucking miserable. <laughs> like, wow, do I? can I use the force to get the raccoons out? That's fucking hilarious. I haven't heard that one before. Peg spokesman Mark Hamill said the branch closed the same day. They did get into the roof. It's a true story. Copy of a memo, a memo sent to the bank's customers circulated on social media Thursday with the branch manager directing those affected to alternate locations nearby. Hamill confirmed the authenticity of the memo for the star, saying the repairs will likely be finished at the end of October. The city of Toronto launched its latest last assault on Raccoon Nation in April, the addition of green bins designed to prevent all manner of furry creatures from digging into human waste. In May, one rebellious raccoon managed to get into the baggage claim at the Pearson International Airport. Another infiltrated the subway system in February, boarding a train during rush hour. Listen, they just want jobs. <laughs> they just want to contribute to society. <laughs> they want to be bank tellers <laughs> and baggage handlers. Let them bank! Let them bank! A raccoon run bank would be kind of. For some reason, I'm thinking it would be a lot like Gringotts from Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the raccoons would run their banks a lot like goblins, and I can't really say why. I just. I... Money, money would lose all value. It would be all about like shiny things. <laughs> Doodlebug, come here. No, well, you yeah, go you sleep could, in the corner. You could go in with a whole bunch of crumpled up aluminum foil and be like, hey, can I get $100 exactly. for this? And they're like, sure. Here you go. And then they'll be like, that guy thought all that was only worth $100. We sure showed him. That was worth 1000 easy. I, I just, this, <laughs> of all the infestations to have, this seems the most adorable. Dan had a pet raccoon as kid. No, we have a family of pet raccoons. Because he's a hillbilly. <laughs> and what did your grandma used to say to your pet raccoon? You would make such a beautiful coat. Because <laughs> my great-grandmother was granny from the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> Needless to say, they didn't let them work at the bank. <laughs> But you know what? Yeah, raccoons can carry rabies, but everything can has fucking rabies. Literally any mammal can carry rabies. Yeah. If you give me the choice between a raccoon infestation or a possum infestation, I'm picking the raccoon. Yeah. They're at least cute. Possums are mean little fuckers, man. They've got thumbs. They've got the no raccoons. Unless got he thumbs. was raised in the Ozark Hills, he's not a hillbilly. Well, guess fucking what? He was. Exactly where I was raised. So there. Missouri Ozarks. Ozarks. Yep. Sing me a new one, choir pedantic. <laughs> Dottie, your relatives in Canada have a bank. <laughs> You're rich. I don't care. Okay. Well, you've got we've got more. This is one of those things where There, have you ever been in a situation where you're like, if I tell anybody about this, they're going to think I'm crazy? I tell you stories about those things every week. Yeah. <laughs> and well, sometimes you don't even believe me. How about when it's the entire neighborhood who has to tell this story? Ohio residents say monkeys on the loose in neighborhood. <gasps> he let the monkeys loose? He let the monkeys loose. Oh, God, we're done for. Lebanon, Ohio. Residents of a quiet Ohio town in southwestern Ohio swear they're not seeing things when they tell people monkeys are on the loose in their neighborhood. Let the monkeys loose. He said he would. You didn't listen to him. WLWT TV reports residents in Lebanon, about 30, a city 30 miles northeast of Cincinnati, have used their phones to capture photos of the monkeys hanging out in trees. Lebanon police say they're aware of the reported monkey sightings and are investigating. 
Resident suspect the monkeys were pets at some point. Resident say the monkeys haven't been spotted since being photographed several weeks ago, but can still be heard. So they're like stealth monkeys. They're monkeys with cloaking technology. <laughs> when are you losing Ohio? No. You love monkeys. I, I love watching them. I don't love it. Monkeys are very mean creatures. So Grady hates those things falling off the roof, right? Yes. Can you picture poor Grady with fucking monkeys? <laughs> Poor Grady would be so upset. He's gonna have to be. Wow. He's gonna have wow. to deal with a dog in a, in, a, in a little over a month. He's not. Of course, Loki is the sweetest dog, and you know he he grew up with cats. He would never hurt a cat, but Grady is Grady. So Grady doesn't know that. Grady. As far as Grady's concerned, he's he's the almighty horrible demon dog. Just, I, what I love is all of these people are like, no, really, you gotta believe me. There no, are seriously. monkeys in our neighborhood. Monkeys. You realize this is Ohio. Yes, I know this is Ohio. This isn't like the jungle. No, it's not, but there's fucking monkeys, okay? I promise you. I wonder if and the, then the guy comes out and he's like, I don't see any monkeys. They were fucking right here! See them. They're invisible monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I'm just I'm, I'm picturing the cops are like, did we get the fucking monkey call again? Jesus Christ! The new Planet of the Apes sequel is kind of disappointing, huh? Uh... Like the apes have developed cloaking tech, but they're only taking one town in Ohio. It's, it's one of the you have to be like, did I really see monkeys? <laughs> no, sir. Did we really see monkeys? Come on, man. I don't know anymore. What was in those cookies we had? What was in the fuck cookies? I don't fucking know anymore, man. Did we really see monkeys? I don't know. He let the monkeys loose. He said he'd do it. And, oh, it's like got three animal stories this week, which I, I guess we kind of... This one is kind of... We need animal stories this week. Woman's heart... Human was, world blows. The woman's heart in this next story was in the right place. Bless her heart. Uh-oh. Her brain was entirely in another county. I I don't kids at home, don't don't fucking do this. Um Texas Wildlife issues warning after uh, yeah, Tennessee Wildlife issues warning after Tennessee woman takes home a bobcat. Ooh. They're so cute, but they're so fucking mean. Yeah, they don't want to be your friends. They're like, bobcats. I would love a pet bobcat. I would love a pet lynx. You really don't, Tara. I I, I, I have read like uh uh Pixie Bob. There there was a study done by someone who cared for one, a scientist who cared for one what since it was a child or kitten, I guess is the right word. And um it didn't go well. The bobcats are not nice. Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency is reminding residents that interacting with animals after, against uh, of interacting with animals after a woman took home a bobcat. The agency says a West Tennessee resident saw what she believed to be an injured bobcat on the road. She put the animal in her vehicle, took the animal home in hopes of taking it to a rehabilitator. The animal recovered during the night and became unmanageable in the laundry room. Yeah. TWRA. It's cute though. Kind of like Peggy. TWRA went to the home to remove the animal. They used to say the animal was healthy and released back into the wild. They used to say, do not pick up injured or orphaned wild animals. Yeah. Bob. Yeah. Bobcats don't want to hang out at your house. Yeah. I they mean, will fuck you right up. I mean, bless your heart for trying. That, you. Like, you Experienced hunters don't fuck with bobcats. Because while they are sort of, they're they're like very large, how, they look like very large house cats. Yeah. They, they are, are not. They're not. They, these are, you ever see your cat like playing around and batting around? Okay. Bobcats do that for serious. Yeah. They they're, will. They're, they're ferocious little buggers. Yeah, they will fucking kill you. Because they, they can. They will climb you and throat you. Yeah. 
it's not it's not their fault they are not domesticated cats they just i'm kind of surprised she was even able to get a picture of it yeah it's it's all right i mean it's It's just like chilling on the washing machine like are those cat treats those are cat treats in the picture she's got a bag of cat (laughs) treats (laughs) (laughs) the bobcat does not want cat treats (laughs) <laughs> the bobcat wants whatever house pet you have yes yes it's i mean but they're salmon flavored sweetie no <laughs> you're not gonna work out call call the people who is their job to deal with animals maybe if if you're really really concerned stay in your car nearby yeah but do not be like, you're coming home with me. I'm going to make it all better. They will kill you. Yeah. Let the pros handle the wild animals. <clears throat> the bobcat wants your fingers. Even yes. like feral house cats. You need training before you get into like a trap, neuter, release program. Like the, the shelter I work at will train you for that. But you can't just be like, hey, can I borrow a trap for TNR? They're like, <laughs> what are you, stupid? No. You don't fuck around with feral cats unless you know what you're doing. Yeah, you, you cats even even because they have they have these claw things. Yeah, even domestic cats have to be brought up around people. Yes, you can you can you know get them comfortable with people eventually, but unless they're raised with people, they not like the people. We have a few ferals that we had to bring in for various reasons. They had a health problem and wouldn't have survived in the wild, whatever, and they fucking hate us, man. There's one named Shifty. Man, like, if you even look directly at him, he starts hissing and carrying on. Like, they don't want any part of us. And the ideal with the shelter is they try and get them adopted out as barn cats. If someone has barn and they need a mouser that doesn't need a lot of human interaction, that's usually what they try to do with those cats. Because they wouldn't survive in a colony, but, you know, in a controlled outdoor environment where nobody fucks with them, they'd be okay. But yeah, they they don't want anything to do with us. I I, I just, I imagine someone trying to bring a bobcat to your shelter. Holy Christ. Yeah, no. This kitty is very upset and I don't know why. (laughs) Can you take care of him? (laughs) No. No, we're not really equipped for that. Ma'am, are you bleeding? Oh, it's just he took a little bite. Your thumb's gone. I know, but it'll be fine. And even a domesticated cat bite can fucking kill you. Yeah. Like, we're not, like, we don't, if we get scratched, we don't have to report it. If we get bitten, we have to write an incident report. And they're like, alcohol and antibiotic cream. Because a cat bite can fuck you up, even if they've had all their shots. Let's, let's, sadly, let's turn back to the human, stupid. Uh, because, oh, Jesus. It is a cute bobcat. He is. It's just don't, don't, don't pet the bobcat. No, no touch the kitty. No <laughs> touch the kitty. Um, let's, you, one of the fascinating jobs in law enforcement to me has always been the negotiator. The, the crisis, neg- where they have to get someone yeah. out and they have to talk someone down. Because we just watched Inside Man last night. <laughs> it's fascinating. And yet, I'm pretty sure this, the reality of it, the the idea, this is not what this negotiator signed up for. Suspected car thief lured out of tree by taco. Oh, that would work on you. What? Suspected car thief lured out of tree by taco. Yeah, that would work. (laughs) Yeah. Taco, bourbon. Regina police officers spent all afternoon negotiating with a man to come down from a tree he climbed to escape the rest before he was ultimately lured down with a taco provided by a neighbor. Police say the man climbed the tree in the 700 block of Garnet Street around 11.45 a.m. on Wednesday after officers followed the man who was suspected of stealing a vehicle. Police said he was first spotted in a vehicle, then on a bicycle, so he's stealing all the shit. Um... A crisis negotiator arrived on the scene around 12.30 p.m. Woman told a 980 CGMA, uh, CGME she heard the man screaming that his eyes were burning and he was seen rubbing them uncontrollably. Another man who lives down the street claimed he witnesses police trying to chase the man earlier. There were around 15 uniformed and plague officers on the scene 
Firefighters and EMS were also there to assist. Uh, the man would seem to be tired uh, after being in the tree for more than three hours. He could be seen yawning, stretching, and smoking cigarettes. More than an hour to pass, the police started to close in on the man. Another person started to spray the man with water. The man shouted swear words at them and eventually dropped his backpack. N the negotiator remained in contact with the man and had a different plan. When police were talking amongst themselves, concerned parents were talking to each other nearby in the alley about how they hoped the police would wrap it up soon because kids were about to come home from school. About 20 minutes later, a lady could be heard yelling at the man in the tree from the alley. She said she, said she bought him an Indian taco. Prior to this, the man said he was hungry. The negotiator took over the conversation. At the point, the man came off the tree and onto the garage. Police told him to have his hands up as he walked toward them and was later arrested. <laughs> This is a pretty, it seems like a pretty major police response for a guy in a, tree. in a tree having like an allergy attack. He was armed with a screwdriver. Yeah. But I don't feel like you needed 15 cops and a fire department for this. <laughs> like, I can honestly imagine the negotiator gets there is like, you fuckers called me for what? Like, Really? <laughs> I mean, I would hold an entire neighborhood captive for tacos. He would. Like, all you need is two of those fuckers to shake the tree. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even that high up. He's not going to get hurt falling. He's, like, maybe one story up. <clears throat> Just shake the tree till he falls out. What was it? He said that uh, they tried to talk him down. And he said, um, I... Uh... We just want, negotiator says, we just want you to come down safely. The man replies, I know where I'm going and I'm not coming down. We just yeah, want you to come it. down, sir. I am not going to jail. Really? You you really think that? Okay. Okay. He's going he's gonna to live in that tree? <laughs> yeah. I'm in the tree now forever. This is my home. Going to try and get adopted by the raccoon? <laughs> I know where I'm going. I'm not coming. It's not how it, you don't get to be like, I have annexed this tree. This is tree burbia now. Right. You don't, if you don't want to go to jail, <clears throat> instead of climbing a tree, maybe don't steal a car. <laughs> I like that will, will in the channel. Sir, please get down for that tree. No, you're just going to yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> If only they'd thought three hours earlier to get a taco. I, you can't Instead just... Instead of a hostage negotiator and a fire truck. You know, I know the sovereign citizen shit is already, is already crazy, but for fuck's sake, you can't annex a tree. No. Where, it's where not is this? Regina. Where's that? Uh... It's next to Vagina. No puns for you. You're not good at it. Regina rhymes with fun. Um, <clears throat> I think this was... C-J-M-E? Regi that sounds like Canada. Yeah, I think it's... Can oh, yeah, there's, oh, a little can yeah. there's a little Canadian flag. Yeah, that's Canada. Regina, Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. They don't even have sovereign citizen shit up there. <laughs> Stop trying to import our but bad diet. I bad do ideas. now understand why this was the most polite negotiation ever. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, I got you a taco, eh? Okay. Okay, then I'll come down now. <clears throat> I just imagine, I'm not coming down. I know where I'm going. Well, he's got a point, you know. He, yeah. he, he is going to jail. I'd stay up in the tree. Would you stop it? <laughs> You're not helping. Yeah, but he's going to jail. Now. Shut up, okay? Oh. All right, I'm just going to warn everybody. Go ahead and get your let it go jokes out of the way for this next one already. Because that's that's exactly... Just... Man survives 25-kilometer ride hanging on to the side of a German train. Oh. 
The man survived a 99 mile per hour ride holding on to the side of a high speed train in Germany. Duschbahn said he grabbed plastic bellows connecting two carriages of the uh, Bellefeld Hanover Express on Thursday using just a small ledge to stand on. The 59 year old man acted after the train with his luggage started moving away from the station. Dude, Liam Neeson's next movie is going to be amazing. <clears throat> so he left his luggage on the train and decided he wasn't... He... You forgot your luggage on the train. So instead of just like letting someone know and having them hold it at the next stop, uh -huh. getting the next train to the next stop. Yep. You motherfucking Mission Impossible. That <laughs> shit. How is this? It's a. I admire that a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. But this is really did not think this one through. I mean, thank God it didn't go through a really tight tunnel. I, 25 mi 25 kilometers at 100 miles an hour. Yeah, that's got to <clears throat> sting a little. I mean, my God. <sighs> no, no, I'm getting my bag. I'm getting my fucking bag. The man who was unhurt and is believed to be from Romania then continued his journey to Hanover inside the carriage. <laughs> Because they slowed, someone like called the driver and they slowed it down. I mean, wow. <clears throat> I was in that bag. That would be, you know what? That would be me. If I was the cops, I'd be like, somebody find that bag, get all the you sniffer got the dogs. You got in there or some shit, man? Get the drug sniffer dog, get the bomb sniffer dog. Get, you got, dog. like the next Game of Thrones book? Get all the dogs and I smell this bag. bag. I mean, Jesus. Yeah, Marcellus Wallace's soul? <laughs> <laughs> That's a deep cut. Wow. <laughs> like, if it's just underwear and socks, I get it. But... I know, right? You can get more underwear and socks, man. No shit! You're not a depleted resource. Are you carrying state, state secrets in your fucking bag? Do you I have the launch... Be more careful. Do you, have, do you have the launch codes or some shit? Huh? Just, <clears throat> god damn it. Why? It's just a bag! That's some hardcore shit. Like, clearly this guy, if this guy's not already a spy, he's going to be soon. Because I don't know what the German intelligence agency's called, but they're going to be like, that guy, he's got the name for it. <laughs> His name is Douche Bon. Bon. Douche Bon. Douche Bon. And he's just hanging on to a fucking train. All right. I, I. We couldn't get through a whole week without one. So here's a story. Everybody get ready to get angry. Fucking just uh, get ready. I'm sorry. You're all good. Everybody get just. I don't, I don't have any cats. Peggy, you know what? Here. I this. Ow! Really? <laughs> here we go. We Yeah, we're going to. I'm even like, I'm even going to queue up the rude. song. Hey, don't grab my leg. She's just reaching one paw out of the hole and fucking with me. I, I, I've i got to cue the song up for this next story. I haven't done this in ages, and I'm cueing the song up for this story. Just, you know what? Both of us just let him read the headline and let, let's... <gasps> ah, that's not the song. Damn it! That's the wrong song. Did she gag herself with her own underwear? Yep. Are we sure this wasn't for FetLife? <laughs> I, 
I'm finding the song. I'm finding the... This needs the song. Where is it? I don't have it. Ah! I'm so unprepared. This is getting edited out. This is getting it out, edited out. God damn it. Why would you... Damn it! Okay, here we go. Here we go. Maybe her husband wanted to move her back to Missouri. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Because I know that movie. <laughs> Da, 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 douche quake. Douche quake. Woman fakes her own kidnapping. Post video of herself online tied up. Teresa Williams, 38, of Hamilton, reportedly told police a masked man entered her home early Thursday morning, tied her up, and cut off her clothes. Butler County Sheriff Richard Jones told WESH2 Williams claimed the man then used her phone to videotape the event and later post posted the clips to her Facebook account. Post caught the attention of Williams' friends who called 911. Police initiated a full response that included a helicopter search and closing down a highway. However, once Oof. investigators started questioning Williams, the story began to unravel. Here she took the, vi the videos herself, said Williams actually tied herself up and then posted the messages from a McDonald's. You know they can track that. <clears throat> Man, these days, with all the horrible shit that's going down, especially with just what happened last night, there were people going onto Twitter and putting up fake my father is missing, my son yep. is missing, all of these things. Just There were reports of shooters in every single casino on the Strip at one point. Yeah. And it... Rumors of some woman walking through the crowd telling everyone they were going to die. Like, people will just make shit up. Yeah. We we need... You need an internet license. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty, we're at the point, you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really ready to, to advocate, you need a license to internet before you're allowed to get on the internet. We wouldn't get one. We would. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, what do you, what We'd do you, be out of business. What do you intend to use the internet for? I'm a scream, fuck it, dumb people. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. that doesn't sound responsible. No. But you know what? If you look at what we do, it's actually very responsible. We're trying to teach here. We are. We are. We're trying to teach We're like you. a really vulgar Sesame Street. <laughs> One of these things is not like every, the fucking others. Every week is brought to you by the letters F and U. Oh, God damn. Because, I mean... Uh... Yeah, Dan was... Dan's from Missouri, and I'm from New York. So when we first started dating, he talked about moving back to Missouri a lot. So I made him watch Gone Girl a lot. Like a lot, a lot. And every time he makes crack about moving to Missouri, I'm like, break out the Gone Girl DVD. Because you need to understand what happens when you move your prissy New York wife to fucking backwater Missouri. She goes crazy and she fakes her own murder. So. And, and burns your life down, because that's really the key part for me. I just, it. So maybe this chick's husband wanted to move it to Missouri. The helicopter, the closing the highway down, the, the it costs thousands the of dollars. scaring the shit out of everyone you know. Yes! Everyone in your life is having a fucking panic attack right now. Anyone who cares about you is... Like, if a video went up on my Facebook page of me bound and gagged and crying, that I, like, what the fuck would you do? You go like John Wick on New Jersey, oh, and yeah. then I'd be like, just kidding. I do like that Dan had and to think about it a second. He's like, and 16 people would already mm. be dead. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, you don't it, fuck around with that shit. You it, never know who you love who's a homicidal maniac. And here's the other thing. You do this, you go to jail. She is, in fact, going to jail. Yes. She's you will, in fact, be locked up. Not <clears throat> Probably not tied to a pole, but you're going to be in handcuffs for a while. Yeah. They they don't they don't like it when you lie. The cops are really, really, really. Please really, don't spoil really, Gone Girl. Some of us haven't seen it yet. Shut up! That movie's like three years old. Three years old? And the novel's even older. There has to be a statute of limitations on that shit. Your internet license is revoked. <laughs> no, it's just it. You lie to the police. They get angry. Yeah, they don't like that. They cause them to shut down a highway. They have no chill. No. They have no chill. And what's it says like they don't even know why. The fuck were you bored? Were were you Are you very, very unwell? That, like if you need attention that bad, you're very unwell. For Christ's sakes. You need something to do. I mean, shit, just start watching how-to videos on YouTube. That's what I do when I'm bored. I've got, See, you I, know what? When I'm bored, I internet shop. and I could tie myself up and post videos of me and fake my own kidnapping, or I could learn how to relacquer the couch. Why would you lacquer a couch? Well, you gotta take if it's a wood couch, you have to take the material off and then seal it up and then put the material back on it. And... Oh, I was thinking stain, not lacquer. Yeah. Well, but I'm thinking like, why would you stain the fabric? That's weird. never mind. <laughs> I'm still not unconvinced this wasn't like <clears throat> she didn't really mean to post it to FetLife and just hit the wrong button. No, she. Oh no, she had uh, um, messages from uh, her attacker whose name was tony let me find it i i i i'll i can just i'll find the uh some of these messages that doesn't change my mind that's a legit thing um let's see uh yeah uh let's see um tony broke into her house uh, was posting face. Here it is. My name is Tony. Tell little Thelma she can't hide forever. I see her when she's sleeping. I'm like Santa Claus. Um, then it says, I own this account. I'll do as I please. Fuck all of you. Teresa Williams will pay for her mistakes. That last part is true. That is, in fact, tr that was prophetic. That was oddly yeah. prophetic. Because, maybe Tony's. Um, maybe Tony's the DA. Yeah. Uh, so the the first thing I I would would say this week things we learned um YouTube is better when you're is is better than just about anything else when you're bored. It's it's Yeah, better I tend to shop and that's not a great habit, but it's also not a felony. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's YouTube. Like, I just tend to buy a lot of shit on my Sephora app. But <clears throat> nail polish isn't a crime. YouTube is is better than arson. It's it's better than uh, faking your own kidnapping. It's better than stealing a car. It's it's pretty much and 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 bonus. You get to learn how to put down carpet if you want. To. Yeah. Or or how just to don't, just don't just don't read the comments. Right. Or how to reroute your bathroom. It's it's useful. Um. Or how to do a sick contour. We've learned there is nothing in your luggage worth hanging on to the side of a train for. I mean, maybe there is. But then you are the most interesting man in the world. Do you know they replaced him? Oh, yeah, they have a whole new guy. They have a... Was there an election held and I missed it? Yeah, what happened to the old dude? I think there, no, I think there actually was. I think there was online voting. What happened to the old dude? I like the old dude. He, like, retired or something. The How do you guy... retire from being interesting? The new guy speaks Spanish. How did you, How do you retire from... I mean, 
do you like to become a little bit boring or decide, you know what, today, instead of being the most interesting man in the world, I'm going to watch golf. He just, he got like really into Real Housewives of New York. And he just got boring, man. That's all he can talk about anymore. We learn during a police standoff, sometimes all you need is a taco. Never <laughs> underestimate the power of a good taco. We've learned that, yes, we know you care about the animals, but you are not trained to deal with the wild ones. Leave them alone. Look, I'm soft-hearted as fuck. Yeah. Like, I'm soft-hearted enough. I know I, I talk like an asshole on here, but really, like, I'm soft-hearted enough that when there's a commercial and, like, one person has the good product that works and the other person has the shitty product that doesn't work, I feel bad for that person. <laughs> Even though I know it's not real, and they're actors, and, like, they did not spill anything on their shirt and embar get embarrassed in front of their boss. I feel bad for them. You ever see the commercials where the cereal eats the other cereal? The I can't take chocolate it. Chocolate. <laughs> she gets upset. It's too upsetting. Like, why is there violence? I tried to show it to her, and she got upset. I can't. I like the Frosted Mini Wheat commercials because all the little mini wheats are really nice to each other and they're not competitive and they're all really excited about being eaten by human children and moving them through their day. So, like, I get it. Like, if I saw the little wounded bobcat, I would have a full on Disney princess moment and want to, like, take it. Like, I currently have massive guilt because. We didn't fill our bird feeders while we were in Vegas, and I think all the birds hate us now because I filled it and they're not here eating. And I feel guilty because the birds abandoned us. And he's like, Terry, it's winter. And I'm like, I know, but they hate us now. <laughs> but I would still not bring a bobcat home. Yeah, that, that turns into the story of how one lost one's kidney. Yeah. We've learned that Sometimes you're not crazy. Sometimes monkeys are actually invading your neighborhood. And finally, we've learned that in Toronto, the raccoons appear to be winning. Yeah. And are setting up uh, a credit union. 